If you consider yourself a hard gainer and you find that no matter how hard you try, you just can't pack on any more muscle, you're probably wondering, what am I doing wrong here? You've probably spent months or maybe even years trying to bulk up, but you're still skinny. You don't have much noticeable muscle mass and most of your t-shirts are still baggy, especially around your arms. Meanwhile, you see other people that just seem to have an easier time than you. People that might not work out as much or they might eat the worst foods, yet they seem to be able to build muscle just by looking at a dumbbell. This can become really frustrating and even if you're a persistent person that doesn't quit, it can be very easy to simply label yourself as a hard gainer and to start making excuses. But the truth is that you're not a hard gainer. Sure, everyone's biology and physiology is different and sure you may have a slightly tougher time building muscle than others, but most of what you believe about being a hard gainer is just a myth that's keeping you skinny. In reality, if you just do the seven things that I'm about to show you consistently, I don't care how much of a hard gainer you think you are, you're gonna bulk up. The first and the most common problem for skinny guys is not eating enough calories. The irony is that most people that call themselves hard gainers think that they eat so much, but that's usually not the case. On top of that, there are some people out there passing along misinformation claiming that you don't even need a calorie surplus to build muscle, that it's just a myth and that you just need to be doing the right things in the gym to get the results. But the truth is that aside from quick newbie gains that you might see in the beginning, not eating enough calories makes it very tough for your body to build muscle mass. That's because if you're in an energy deficit or even an energy balance, so even if you're at maintenance, there are physiological changes that don't support muscle growth the same way that a calorie surplus would. For example, not eating enough calories increases your levels of AMPK, which is an enzyme that impairs muscle growth. At the same time, it also reduces levels of mTOR, which is an enzyme that's essential for muscle growth. If your mTOR activity is low, it's gonna lead to decreased cell growth and decreased protein synthesis rates. So we wanna make sure that we're eating enough calories to keep mTOR high and AMPK low. The other problem with being in a calorie deficit is that you're gonna be negatively affecting hormones that benefit muscle growth, like your testosterone, and you're also gonna be increasing your levels of the catabolic hormone known as cortisol. This is once again gonna make it harder to build muscle. Now don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that I want you to just start loading up on massive amounts of food. Consuming more and more calories doesn't always lead to more and more muscle growth. And if you eat too many calories, at some point the extra calories will be stored as fat and that may be why some people are getting confused and abandoning the entire idea of a calorie surplus. The truth is that it's only an extreme calorie surplus that creates unnecessary problems. For example, a 12 week long study that compared lifters that ate a small calorie surplus of around 3000 calories per day to another group that was eating 3600 calories per day found that both groups packed on the same amount of muscle. So the extra 600 calories didn't help the second group build any extra muscle, but the researchers did find that that group gained five times the amount of fat as the other group that was having 600 calories less. So instead of having you use some complicated formula, I've already created a calculator that'll give you the exact amount of macros that you should be having to build muscle without gaining excess fat. All you gotta do is click the link for the macro calculator in the description below, enter in your stats, and then click the hard gainer option as your last step. Once your macros load, you're gonna actually wanna start counting and tracking them daily since we've already discussed that most skinny guys consume far fewer calories than they actually think that they do. You can use an app like MyFitnessPal to easily do that. Now you might notice that I recommend a lot of carbs and that's actually the second tip. If you're a skinny guy struggling to build muscle, increase your carbs. This is because studies show that when you compare very low carb diets to very high carb diets, the high carb groups maintain their strength better, they recover faster from their workouts, and they stay in more of an anabolic muscle building state. One reason why carbs assist with muscle growth is because they help increase testosterone while reducing cortisol. And you don't have to compare a very low carb diet to a high carb diet to see this. A diet that's made up of 30% carbs is by no means a low carb diet, but an even higher carb diet with 60% carbs will still lead to significantly higher free testosterone levels and lower cortisol levels as you can see in this graph. 
Another reason why more carbs are favorable for muscle growth is because glycogen is an excellent energy source for lifting heavy weights. Without carbs or with a low carb intake, you're going to reduce the amount of glycogen that's stored in your muscles, which in turn will drop your performance at the gym. You can see this in one study in which participants were carb depleted before training. Once their glycogen stores were low, the number of reps that they could do on a bunch of different exercises dropped significantly. The good news is that the opposite is also true. If you enrich your diet with carbs, your muscles will have enough energy to be able to train harder in the gym and to make faster progress with progressive overload. This is actually another common reason why skinny guys have trouble gaining mass. Even though they do hit the gym workout after workout, they fail to apply progressive overload. In other words, they don't consistently place a higher and higher level of tension on their muscles. Instead, they constantly do what their body is already used to and comfortable with, which sends their body a signal that there's no need to improve since the muscles have already adapted to that particular level of stress. The reality of the matter is if you want to build muscle, it's essential that you apply progressive overload. And you can do that many different ways, but the most effective way is by gradually increasing the amount of weight that you're lifting. Not only is it easy to track progress this way, but it'll also be a potent way to force muscle growth because there's a close relationship between strength and muscle mass. One study in particular found that there's an almost linear correlation between chest size and one rep max strength on the bench press. So if you wanna get bigger pecs, you should aim to up the amount of weight that you're lifting on the bench. Now, this doesn't just apply to your chest. Research on power lifters show that the primary difference between muscular and less muscular lifters is how strong they are. The stronger a lifter is, the more muscle mass they tend to carry. That's why you want to gradually increase the amount of weight you use during your weight training workouts. For example, let's say you did four sets of squats for eight reps with 200 pounds during your last session. Your goal for your next squat session should be to do the same amount of sets and reps with 205 pounds and then 210 pounds the following session. While this may sound easy in theory, it's very unlikely that you'll be able to move up five pounds for every single session without ever hitting a plateau. But the goal should always remain the same. So if you are stuck, you can start doing things like undulating periodization, where you would cycle your rep range during each workout. A low rep range, like three reps, would allow you to use a lot heavier weight and build strength, while a higher rep range above 10 reps will make your body more efficient at clearing out lactic acids, helping you feel less fatigued. But by changing your reps from low to moderate to high, you'll find it easier to break through strength plateaus when you do get stuck. This is just one of the many methods that you can use to help you break through a plateau. But the point is that you need to make a conscious effort to constantly increase the amount of tension that's being placed on your muscles over time. Now, with all the muscle breakdown that you'll get from applying progressive overload, you'll want to make sure that you're eating enough protein, which means eat all the protein that's recommended in your macros. This is very important because the amino acids found in protein are the building blocks for your muscles. In fact, protein is extra important because muscle growth is all about building up more amino acids in a muscle than the amount that gets broken down on a daily basis. Whenever you maintain a positive protein turnover rate, a muscle grows. However, if you maintain a negative protein turnover rate, you'll lose muscle. Picture your muscles as a wall and amino acids as the bricks that make up that wall. The more bricks you add to the wall, the bigger it becomes. But if you remove bricks from the wall, the smaller it becomes. To maximize muscle growth, you wanna have at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is about 0.8 grams of protein per pound. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be having at least 160 grams of protein per day. You should also do your best to spread that protein out evenly throughout the day as this can help you build even more muscle. Studies show that a balanced protein distribution may lead to more protein synthesis than an imbalanced protein distribution. So if you're having four meals per day and your goal is to build muscle, you're better off having a quarter of your daily protein intake in each meal rather than having something like 70% of your protein in one meal and then having 10% in each of the other meals. Next, let's talk about something that you don't want to do. You don't want to overdo cardio, especially if you're already skinny. That's because cardio hurts muscle growth, as shown by a 2012 meta-analysis, where researchers found that adding cardio to a resistance training plan lowered muscle growth effect size by almost 50%. It's important to note that this study was isolated to the lower body, and most cardio exercises like running, stair climbing, or cycling 
happen to fatigue the lower body. Even though upper body muscle mass isn't as affected by cardio, you'll be better off keeping it to a minimum if your main goal is to bulk up. The primary reason for this is due to the influence that cardio has on mTOR and AMPK pathways. Like I said earlier, we want to have higher mTOR levels and lower AMPK to stimulate muscle growth. And lifting weights will help you accomplish just that. The problem, however, is that cardio triggers the exact opposite. It reduces muscle growth by increasing AMPK while reducing mTOR. On top of that, cardio decreases your caloric surplus and you may find it harder to eat even more calories than the large amount that you're already required to eat just because you're doing a ton of cardio. Overdoing cardio will also create excessive amounts of fatigue, which can further reduce muscle growth by reducing your performance levels at the gym. So if you're a skinny guy and you're struggling to build muscle, you should avoid cardio for the most part, and instead your entire focus should be on strength training. Finally, the last thing you'll wanna make sure you're doing is getting enough sleep. Even though sleep is often overlooked, optimizing your sleep can literally help you gain pounds of muscle. However, if you're not getting enough sleep, not only can it hurt your health, but it'll definitely hurt your body composition. For example, in one weight loss study, they found that when people slept just 40 minutes less per day, the amount of weight they lost in the form of muscle shifted from 20% to 80%. And what's even more interesting is that the people participating in the study were allowed to catch up on sleep over the weekend. So if you don't sleep during the week and you save it for the weekend because of either your job or school, you might wanna reconsider that strategy because it doesn't seem to have the same effect as simply getting enough sleep consistently throughout the week. The good news is that by getting enough sleep, you'll speed up recovery and take advantage of all the muscle building benefits that sleeping provides. To fall asleep faster and to get higher quality, deeper sleep, the first thing you wanna do is maintain a consistent sleeping schedule. You shouldn't be going to bed one day at 11 p.m., the next day at 3 a.m., and the next day at 9 p.m. Keep it consistent. You'll also want to start slowing down with the caffeine after around noon because it'll take about six hours to get out of your system. And the other thing you can do to get to sleep faster that a lot of people are afraid of doing is you can eat carbs before going to bed. It's a myth that eating carbs before bed will make you fatter. As long as you're following the macros that are based on your body, it doesn't matter if you eat your carbs in the morning or at night. Instead, studies show that carbs can help boost serotonin, which will help you get to sleep faster. That's about it, guys. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release new free tips and tricks, just like the ones you found in this video. Also, if you wanna take the next step and you wanna get a scientifically proven solution for building the maximum amount of muscle in the next 12 weeks without all the fat gain that's typically associated with